Mail Order Electronics, one of the highlights of my misspent youth. Allied Radio, BNA, and Radio Shack. With more than 7,000 stores at one point, how many stores did Radio Shack have in 1957? Two. Two stores. Here's Radio Shack's 1957 catalog. They had already been in business 34 years and had just the two locations. They were acquired by Tandy in 1963, and that's when their phenomenal growth began. Let's go through this 1957 catalog and see what's first. Ah, turntables. Or rather, these are actually record changers. Turntables on which you could pile a stack of records, which would drop, each one in turn, and play. Hi-Fi Kits This was in the day when real high-fidelity buffs built their own systems out of individual components. These are some of Radio Shack's Hi-Fi packages, nearly all of which, you may notice, are mono, not stereo. Correctly put, they have monaural sound rather than stereophonic. A single channel, not two. Why is this? Because this stuff was expensive. Remember, $100 then is around $1,000 today. For hi-fi buffs, it was considered better to have good quality sound in mono than mediocre sound in stereo. Here are some tuners and amps. The really serious hi-fi buff would have a separate pre-amplifier and a separate power amplifier. This gear didn't go into some big cabinet like Grandma had in her living room. No, this stuff went on your bookshelf. These were known as bookshelf hi-fi systems. Now, I'm not talking about the little toy bookshelf systems they make today that would go on a bookshelf suitable for holding comic books. No, these systems back in the day went on bookshelves that held Moby Dick and War and Peace in big leather-bound editions. A lot of this stuff has tubes sticking out of it. The transistor era was upon us in 1957, but very little in hi-fi was made with transistors. Here we see the Dynakit 50-watt Mark II power amplifier. I still have my Dynakit. It's not the 50-watt, but I have an amp and a preamp that I built from a kit in junior high school. Ordered from the Allied Radio catalog. It still works. Still sitting on my desk. I'll show you. I last replaced the tubes back in the 1970s with Radio Shack tubes, coincidentally. I remember they had a lifetime guarantee. Now we're into hi-fi enclosures and speaker grill cloth, woofers and tweeters, cabinets, Wharfdale speakers. Acoustic Research AR1. That was new stuff at the time. Acoustic suspension, tuned and sealed cabinet. High tech. More speakers. The serious hi fi guys bought individual speakers and cabinets for them separately. Sometimes they built the cabinets themselves to get a real custom built in look or in an attempt to get that ultimate hi fi sound. Turntables again. And record players. What's the difference? Well, a record player is a turntable that comes already in a suitcase-like box with a built-in amplifier and a handle on it so you can drag it around places and be popular. Recocut. This stuff on this page is serious. The guys who shopped on this page wouldn't dream of owning what I just described as a record player or even one of the regular turntables, especially not a record changer. These serious guys had totally manual turntables. Records played one at a time, and they dropped the needle, excuse me, stylus, on the record manually and took it off at the end. You could buy a totally manual turntable. But oh no, that was too easy for these guys. They were going to buy a motor separately, and a platter, and a separate tone arm, and separate cartridge, and build their own. Pretty serious stuff. But also on this page is a kid's battery-operated acoustic phono. Plays anywhere, it says. Acoustic phono means it isn't amplified electrically. This thing takes a flashlight battery for the motor, but the sound is acoustic, like the old Victrolas. The sound comes up out of the needle and vibrates through a cavity of some kind that grows larger, 
like the old speaker horns. It's an acoustic amplifier. That's a real thing. I'm not making that up. Here are some more fancy pickups or cartridges and needles or styluses. Tape recorders. Ampex. Stereo, it says. This is the first I think I've seen the word stereo in this catalog. Oh, and here's the midge tape. The Mohawk midge tape. I have one of those. It uses a strange tape cartridge of Mohawk's own design. Tubes. Lists of tubes. When something goes wrong with your electronics devices, your TVs, your radios, whatever, you pull out the tubes, put them in a bag, and take them down to your drugstore or dime store. Inside the door is a big standing machine. Looks like a kind of pinball machine, except it says on it, test your tubes for free. And you follow the instructions and test your tubes. And any of them that prove to be bad, well, they would sell you one. In the cabinet part at the bottom of this tube tester was a stock of tubes. You'd go get the manager and he or she would bring the key and you could get a replacement tube. Many people fix their own electronics devices themselves by replacing tubes in this way. Now here are some transistors. GE, RCA, the Raytheon CK722. For transistor hobbyists. Here's a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes just to show you how small these micro-midget speakers are. Tube sockets. And batteries from Mallory, Burgess, and Radar Light. Mallory later named their alkaline battery line Duracell. You've heard of it. And what's this? Solar cells in 1957. Relay switches, photo flash kits, other geeky stuff. Speaking of geeky stuff, while we turn the pages looking at this geeky stuff, you know, back in those days, they didn't use the word geeky for these things or nerd either. I was around in the 50s and 60s, and I never heard the word nerd until Happy Days, that TV show in the 1970s. We really didn't have a word for techno guys back in the day. Maybe it's because I was one of them and they never said the word around me. I wasn't a real serious one, though. I was kind of into everything. But people who were these techie guys were mostly not talked about because they weren't present. They weren't at the dances. They weren't at student council. They spent gym class in the corner trying not to be seen while calculating the proper trajectory for throwing a basketball through the window. These are the kids who went right home from school and put on their headphones and got out their soldering irons or chemistry sets or encyclopedias or art projects and got to work building the future. As it turned out, these were the people who had a future. The future, it turned out, was in doing stuff not in just being popular. Transformers. Pages and pages of stuff. So I'll just turn the pages, and if you see something you want a closer look at, just pause it. I'll be quiet. This catalog is way bigger than I thought when I had this bright idea, but I want to show the entire catalog, so I'm going to break this video into two parts. We'll call this part one, just to be logical and sequential. Be sure and check out part two. Lots more great stuff to come in the second half of this catalog. If you made it this far, I'd say you are definitely a person with a future.